All right, so now that we have our MCP3008 wired up, what we're gonna to need to do is install some packages and get some readings from our two sensors that we have connected to it. So open up an instance of your terminal from your Raspberry Pi, and what you're gonna to want to do first is type in sudo raspi-config, and go to the advanced options section, and go to SPI. We're gonna to want to enable automatic loading of SPI kernel. So uh, current setting is no, we want to set it to yes. And now it'll be loaded, and then we're going to have to reboot our Raspberry Pi. That will allow us to uh, start it up, the SPI. All right, so the next thing we need to do in your terminal on your Raspberry Pi is um, install some packages, of course, right? So if we're going to use the SPI on the uh, Raspi uh, Raspberry Pi, we're going to have to uh, install modules that allow us to do this. And the way we go about doing that is first you're going to have to install uh, the Python 3 um, development tools. And you do that by typing in sudo apt-get install python3 dash dev. We would have done this in earlier videos, but if you haven't been following along, you're going to have to install this. So, as I said, we've already done it, so we have that installed. Excellent. The next thing we're going to have to do is download a package, and the way you do that is typing in wget, and then you're going to want to add this link. And this link, that happened a little too fast, I'm sorry. This link is posted in the comments. Oops. It is github.com slash gadgettoid slash pi dash spy dev or SPI dev slash archive slash master dot zip. When you've got that, let's check our root folder here. We should have something called master dot zip. I'm totally blind. There we go, master dot zip. And uh, we're gonna have to unpack that. We're gonna have to unzip it. So let's unzip master dot zip. And when that's done, we're going to want to take a look. And we now have a folder called pi spy dev master. So let's clean up our master.zip because we don't, that's so ambiguous, what is that, right? And we're going to navigate to our pi spy dev dash master, and then we're going to want to install it. So sudo python3 install, what is it called, setup.py. And this will take a moment. Sorry, uh, the correct command is sudo python3 setup.py install, not the other way around. All right, now that we have that uh, installed, we can flip over to our idle3 because now it, it, it recognizes that we have uh, spy dev installed. So open in idle3, open up a new window. We're gonna write a new script here. Once the window is open, let's uh, save our file. And we're going to navigate to the desktop cookie directory that we've always been working on. And I'm going to call this cookie analog Pi. So once cookie analog is saved, let's import the package that we just installed, SPI dev, and some other things. So what we're going to do, what this program is going to do is it's going to pull the two sensors, each individually, and it's going to get a reading and it's going to display what that reading is, like the actual bit reading, um, because it's simpler to do that for now. And we're going to pull it like every second or something like that. So if we're going to be using time, we're going to import from time, import sleep, and we're also going to want to import OS. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is first open up SPI bus, and you do that by typing in SPI is equal to SPI dev dot SPI dev, and then we're actually going to open it for our setup. Initialize what sensor is where. So we're going to say that the light channel is channel one, uh, channel zero rather, it's the first one. Uh, temp channel is equal to one and sleep time is going to be equal to one for one second. Great, so we have that set up and now I'm going to define a function called get reading into which we're going to pass which channel we want to read. We can only read one channel at a time with the analog digital converter. So we have a function that you can only call once and at a time. Uh, now the next few lines of code 
are going to be a little bit confusing if you are not familiar with an analog digital converter. And so I'm going to have another video that's going to explain what exactly is happening here. And the reason why I think it's important for you to know is, sure, you can just blindly follow along and get this running, especially for a MCP3008, but let's say you're using a different analog digital converter, similar pin layout, um, but the way you get data from it changes. Now the way this works is you, you send in three bytes and you get out three bytes. And you have to understand how to send the message and how to receive and decode the message into something you and I understand. And so that will be covered in a different video. So just bear with me now. And after all this analog uh, sensor setup is done, we'll go over exactly what's going on if you're interested, a little bit of extracurricular. So first we're going to pull the raw data from the chip. And so we're gonna have this value called raw data and we're going to set it to be equal to what we get out of the transfer where we transfer into it a binary one a eight plus the channel that we are asking for shifted over to four places or shifted over four places and then the zero and then after we get the data we are going to process the raw data into something we understand and so processed data is going to be equal to it's it's just data manipulation here we're going to say it's going to be equal to the second bit uh, the last two positions of the second bit so you denote that with a three shifted over eight places with the raw data's um, third bit attached to the end of it. Now for you to understand what we're doing here, uh, what a processed data what, the way an analog sensor works is we're shooting in, in the case of the Pi, 3.3 volts, and we're going to get something out of it, a certain voltage out of it, and, and that and that is related to what our sensor is actually reading. And um, since this is a 10-bit chip, uh, we're going to get 10 to the power of 2 bits out of it, and that means that your 3.3 volts is divided up by 1,024, since that is the value of 2 to the 10. And so you get these increments. Um, and that increment is associated with a voltage, and that voltage is typically associated with a value. So anyways, uh, we now have our function for get reading, and so now we're going to create a loop here where we just get the data from our get reading. So get reading, and we're going to pass in the light channel, and it will do its thing, and then we will print our data, and then we will ask for probably guess our temperature channel see what our temperature is doing and then we'll print that data and then we will sleep for the designated sleep time that we specified earlier we give that a save we give that a run and we see what happens all right cool so the hundred is our light sensor the 200 is our temperature sensor all right, so we see that it's still running here. I just turned on my camera so you can see what I'm doing. We have our light sensor here. If I cover that with my finger, we should see that 100 value change. And there we go, it just went to 400 and 411, cool. So that's our reading. I open it up and with the amount of light that I have on the room here, in the room here, we're back to 100. Here's our temperature sensor reading 218. If I put my finger on that, because I am warmer than my environment right now, 222, we see it's going up. 24 so on and so forth so the value that we're getting is changing based on um, what we're doing to the sensors so now for the rest of the analog sensor videos that you'll see is turning these bit values into something that you and I can actually interpret because what does 223 mean right uh, in terms of a temperature and going over the code but this is all you need really to get the data from an uh, analog sensor on a Raspberry Pi I'll see you in the following videos